Hi everyone. Today I put together this adorable miniature Magloop antenna. It's so cute and likely very inefficient, but it serves a purpose. It's going to allow me to show the current and voltage distribution around a Magloop antenna. And I've added some instrumentation to it so that we can see in real time what's going on. And this month is Nerd Thunder Month. It's where a bunch of us nerdy YouTubers cross-promote each other's channel and um, share some links. So wait to the end to take a look at some of the videos that I think are uh, particularly interesting from other YouTubers. So many of you are probably familiar with the uh, current and voltage distribution diagram like this that's in all of the uh, various textbooks. You know, this is classic. It's uh, a gamma match style configuration where the center of the antenna is, is shorted right to the shield and you have a gamma match to um, feed this element and in the center when it's resonant there's almost no voltage and at the ends when it's resonant is the highest voltage and then the current is the highest near the feed point and then almost no current um, out at the tips. Uh, you can build antennas that are all shorted together like Yagi antennas right through the center of the antenna. They used to call it plumber's delight because there's no voltage there and you don't have to worry about things being shorted out so your boom can just use plumbing uh, materials to build stuff. In fact this antenna uh, is made out of some plumbing stuff. So um, it turns out that Magloop antennas are very similar with their current and voltage distribution so you can imagine that uh, straight antenna just kind of curved back on itself and terminating at the uh, variable capacitor at the end. So at the feed point you have the highest current and then at the capacitor you have the uh, highest voltage. There's a slight difference because the capacitors there there's actually some more current at the, the ends than if it were just a terminated wire. So a little different but the distribution's about the same. And back to the Plumber's Delight aspect, I went ahead and built this one as Plumber's Delight. So my primary drive loop here, the ground side, I just grounded it straight to the outer secondary loop as well, because you can. Uh, I just wanted to demonstrate that since this is pretty much zero volts right here, you can uh, uh, ground all that together. So the way we're going to visualize voltage is I have neon bulbs that strike at 50 to 90 volts and when the voltage gets high enough we should see these light up and I've added little copper pieces of foil so they capacitively couple to the environment around them and so what we're gonna see because the voltage is higher down here by the variable capacitor these neon bulbs will light up first and then this and then this and so it's gonna work its way back towards the feed point. Now to visualize the voltage this is a little trickier because I wanted to eliminate capacitive coupling I didn't want to see the voltage I only wanted to see the current so I set it up in a shunt configuration where I had a wire tapped in a distance away from my LED and I ran it very close to the um, the loop itself so I wasn't capacitively coupling out of the loop too much and then it it feeds back in so when the voltage across the sun, shunt section gets to be about 3 volts, then we'll see these white LEDs light up. And because there's higher current near the feed point, we're going to see this LED first, then this one, and then finally this one down here. So let's get at it. I've got my handy dandy ICOM here set up with uh, pretty low power right now, so I'll key it up. We don't see anything. So start increasing the power. We see the LED at the top here keep going. Now we see the second one. Alright, now we see all the LEDs lit up. Let's see if I can help this neon bulb light up by um, giving it a little bit of capacitance. There we go. I don't want to touch it because uh, I'll get an RF burn down there. There's a lot of voltage down here. Let's see how this one's doing. Yeah, if I touch it I can get it to light up. Let me back the power down again. Let's take a look at, at that. So, I can get that one to light up. That one takes a bit more to light up. Let me back the power down again. 
All right, you got that one to light up. That one doesn't light up. So I have to increase the, the power to get that one to light up. And of course that one doesn't light up. That one lights up, that one won't light up. Let's crank the power a lot more. All right, get that one to light up. So hopefully that um, helps you understand the voltage and current distribution on a mag loop antenna. So, the various videos I want you to go take a look at. I want you to go to Hack a Week and take a look at Dean's video on hacking LED lights. Um, it's very relevant because we did some uh, LED stuff here. And the other video I'd like you to go take a look at is Applied Science Ben Krasnow's um, magnetics um, video. It's, it's amazing um, and very relevant to a mag loop antenna. So, thanks for... Uh, watching and uh, look forward to the next Nerd Thunder video.